I recently had the pleasure of sitting down with Christina Adams, author of Camel Crazy, a quest for miracles in the mysterious world of camels. I hope you'll enjoy this informative and intriguing interview. So Christina, how did you get into the mysterious world of camels? Well, that's something I never could have predicted, but uh, I was minding my own business, being a mother. It was the day when I'd taken my son to a book fair in Orange County, California. And he was reading a book and I was pretty bored because I'd done all the obligatory child entertainment things there and he was happy reading this book. So I'm looking around and uh, I saw a camel there and I thought, why is a camel here if no children are riding it? So I was just kind of bored and I'm a writer so I'm always kind of nosy and so I just walked over and looked at the camel and it was a camel, it was attractive, but nonetheless just a plain camel to me at that time. And so I saw a man that was selling soap and lotion made from the milk. And so I started chatting with him and I said, well, what else did they do with the milk? And I really have no idea why I asked such a question. And he said, it's given to premature infants in the hospital in the Middle East because it's thought to be non-allergenic and it may be close to mother's breast milk. And that was my light bulb moment. And I just thought, I have got to find out about this milk. I feel like it might help my son who had autism and I also felt like it would be a great dairy substitute for people that can't drink regular milk, like him and a lot of other people. So I just went home and I started researching. There was almost nothing on the internet, and, uh, but I didn't give up. And then a few months later, I found an article and it said that they had been treating autistic kids with camel milk and I thought I'm on the right path. And that, so that path took you to getting camel milk and giving that to your son. What, what did that path entail? Well, the path was quite a, a journey because there was no camel milk available at that time in the United States, to my knowledge. And I tried to find camels in America. I found a website and I wrote to them. No one wrote me back. And I really could not find any information. So I started talking to some people and one of them said, I'm going to go to Israel and maybe I can bring back some milk. And I said, wonderful. So he flew it back into the country and uh, unfortunately it was thrown away at the airport because of a couple of things. We didn't know how to do it properly and all that. But he said, I have a phone number for you. There's someone kind of with the science background that you can talk to. So I called over there late one night and woke this gentleman up. But uh, he told me how to call some other people who would have more direct access to the milk. And so then I called that person and he didn't speak a lot of English, but he was willing to help. And he gave me another person uh, who was a doctor and a researcher. And so we started talking about camel milk and I told him about autism, which I had studied quite a bit by then and written my first book about. And then uh, he told me all about camels and camel milk. And so together we kind of put together a theory of why it might help. And then we flew in some uh, frozen Bedouin milk from the desert and got it and we gave it to my son. I gave it to my son and he got amazingly better overnight. In, in what, what did you experience right away after, after he had the milk? Well, it was quite a journey to get the milk. It took quite a long time. Months and months and months had passed. And so by the time that I had actually gotten the milk and tried to give it to him because I was trying to keep the milk and, and get some data, because in the world of autism, when you're treating a child with behavioral therapy or other therapies, you like to find out where were they and where are they now. And usually you take data on that, the like testing or uh, therapy sessions. So I was trying to set up some data, but I didn't have anyone to do that at the time. So finally, I got to the point I was so desperate because he was starting to not do well again. I was so desperate that I just thought, let's just give him this milk right now. And so I gave it to him and he got uh, four ounces at bedtime. And the next morning, even though my expectations were hopeful, but nonetheless kind of low, I was so worn out by this process, he was so different in the morning, it was shocking. So we saw better eye contact, we saw more increased uh, emotional content to his language. He said things like, oh, I love you, you do so much for me, you're really great. Uh, he said, what time is it now? It's time to go to school. He put on his own backpack, he put on his own shoes. He was eating his food more neatly. And for a lot of children with autism, they have motor skill problems, including fine motor, like cutting things, handwriting. And so he was for the first time actually cutting his waffle and not making a big mess on the table. 
And it was just really amazing. And he said, what time, who's picking me up from school today? And he never really asked those kind of big picture questions. Mm -hmm. And so it was quite remarkable. And uh, then for the next few days, it continued and we just saw more and more improvement. And then systemically over the time period, he was able to cross the street by himself without me hanging on to them. Another thing that we in the autism world have to do for our children sometimes. And he also, his skin got better because there are a lot of issues with gastrointestinal disorders and skin issues in some of the children and his skin cleared up from the inside out. Wow, mm -hmm. that's, that's an incredible amount of, of change in, yes. in such a short period of time. And there was even more because he was starting to have these kind of, I call them behavioral breakdowns. The only thing that could help him from kind of spinning into this giddy, uh, lost, uh, acting out kind of situation was trying to put a little food in him, but it really didn't help very much at all. And when I gave him the milk, all that stopped immediately. Wow. And that might have really increased his safety and mine, because mm -hmm. when you have a child that can't really function safely in the community or in your home, it can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that it stopped that, and it was really miraculous in so many ways. What kind of scientific uses are being explored for camel milk? The milk of camels has been known about for a long, long time, where it actually all began with nomadic peoples that keep the camels. So giving credit where credit is due, they have known for a long time that it is a very powerful healing substance. They call it nature's pharmacy. But that knowledge has been lost over the many, many generations, if not centuries in some cases, and they still know about it in the places where they live, but it really hasn't reached our mainstream society. So back when I had my idea that camel milk might help autism and be a good substitute for people that can't have regular dairy, there's really nothing out there. And then slowly, over the years, things have really advanced quite a bit. I've worked with scientists and veterinarians and all other, a lot of other kinds of people who have had that interest in the milk for treating whatever their condition was that they were interested in. So I would say now the most common things that it's used for are autism, that's a main driver of the market, food allergies, which is also very significant, eczema, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, gastrointestinal issues are a very big one, Crohn's disease, IBS, and diabetes, especially in other countries, because here that's kind of still uh, emerging, but in other countries there they have produced a science that show that it's efficacious in the, the treatment of diabetes. So there are a lot of other conditions that it helps as well, but there are really uh, so many that you'd have to go and, and look it up. But uh, I will certainly be talking about that in Camel Crazy. What do you most hope readers will take away from your book? Well, the first thing I hope when readers pick up camel crazy is that they get a really good read out of it and they're kind of going to get an armchair journey so that's what I really want people to enjoy when they read camel crazy I'm going to take them some places that I never thought I'd been let alone they may not have thought they would go to so I'd love for them to have a great journey with me uh, second of all if they have a health problem some of the things that camel milk is used for are conditions that are very difficult to find help for and so if camel milk can help that condition, then that's wonderful because sometimes these conditions are quite expensive, painful, and don't have a typical solution. So I really think it might be able to help a lot of people. And third of all, I guess I'd like for people to remember that Camel Crazy is really a very unlikely book that really just has helped me blossom into a new way of looking at the camel and looking at the incredible people behind it. The world is full of things that you just could have never imagined. I couldn't have ever imagined that a camel would lead me to discover that there are people out there that can help you, that are very kind, that have amazing knowledge that you've never dreamed existed. So if you're stuck in a situation at home, like I was, you don't seem to know where to go or what to do, don't give up. You may have to shift your perspective. You may have to look outside the box, but I urge you to do that. And I hope that Camel Crazy is a great example of, of doing that.